The last weeks I had a cold with the classical symptom fever. I was asking myself, is fever harmful or even meaningful? Does it serve any purpose? Before we take a deep dive into the origin and function of fever, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. First, it is important to define the term fever. The definition is actually not super clear. Under normal conditions, humans possess a constant body temperature of around 36 to 37 degrees Celsius. One speaks of an increased body temperature of up to about 38 degrees Celsius plus minus. Everything above is often classified as fever or pyrexia. Fever usually occurs during an infection, but patients can also develop it as a side effect of medications and fever has also been shown to appear in combination with cancer. Fever is not a disease, but a symptom. How does a fever arise in the human body? Causal for that are substances which are generally referred to as pyrogens. These pyrogens can come from outside, caused by invading bacteria or viruses, but there are also endogenous pyrogens. Endogenous pyrogens are produced from the body's own immune cells as a reaction to inflammation. The pyrogens signal to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus set point value is altered. More specifically, the temperature set point value is increased. In other words, the body feels a bit cold in the current state that triggers shivering to produce and other mechanisms to retain more heat in the body. As a consequence, the body temperature rises until the new set point value is reached. Before you get to know more about the value of an increased body temperature, I would quickly introduce a new feature on this channel. From now on, there is the possibility to become a member with a monthly subscription. With a membership, you have access to exclusive emotes and you are mentioned as a supporter of this channel. The membership is of course completely voluntary. So if you have better reasons to spend your money, please do that. It is a common misconception by parents that fever is extremely dangerous. This concern is better known as fever phobia. And let me say one thing here to make that clear. There are a few cases or diseases which require to treat a fever such as a sepsis or neurological diseases or extremely high temperatures, especially in babies. The majority of fevers, however, should be seen as a normal symptom of a disease that is more or less harmless. In contrast, a fever may even be meaningful. Science looks at fever as an effective defense mechanism of the body's immune system. One among many interesting observations that led to the hypothesis of a positive function of fever was made by Kluge et al. in the 1970s. In experiments with lizards, the scientists could demonstrate that the survival after an infection was significantly increased when the ambient temperature was higher. Lizards, as ectotherms, increase their body temperature by seeking warm environments. The group infected lizards with bacteria and split the infected animals into three groups. Lizards in group 1 were placed in a low ambient temperature environment. Lizards in group 2 were placed in a medium, neutral ambient temperature environment. Lizards in group 3 were exposed to higher ambient temperatures of 40 to 42 degrees Celsius. Host survival, in other words survival of the lizards, was significantly higher in high temperature environments. What has been observed early in reptiles was later also shown in mammals with rabbits. And even insects, such as bees, raise their temperature upon infections. So, fever is an extremely old mechanism that is highly conserved in the animal kingdom. Despite the positive impact that fever seems to have on the immune response, there is still debate and even occasional opposing views. How exactly does fever contribute to fight an infection? One of its functions is thermal restriction. The temperature itself has been shown to limit growth of pathogens such as gram-negative bacteria. It is hypothesized that elevated body temperatures prevent these bacteria from synthesizing important molecules which are essential for their surface membrane. Further, it is assumed that fever interferes with virus replication. It has been shown in mammalian cells infected with a polio virus that high temperatures of around 40 degrees Celsius caused a 200-fold reduction of the replication rate. Apart from the thermal restriction, 
Elevated body temperatures also appear to boost the innate immune system. Neutrophils are an essential part of it. As the most abundant type of white blood cells, neutrophils are among the first cells to encounter invading microbes and eventually kill them. Elevated temperatures seem to enhance recruitment of neutrophils to sites of infection. Not only the innate immune system benefits from fever. T-cells form an important pillar of the adaptive immune system. They either eliminate infected cells directly or they remember the pathogen which prepares the body for a second potential infection in the future or they support antibody production by the activation of B lymphocytes. Proliferation of T-cells has been shown to increase in higher temperature environments. So there is an increasing body of evidence suggesting that fever may positively contribute to fight infections. Next time you have a fever, don't panic, it might actually help you to get better soon. When was the last time you had a fever? Let me know in the comments. If you have also had an infection with fever in the last month, like this video. Please check out this exciting video here and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.